three o'clock, let's go ahead and, and get started. Okay, um, I'll, I'll kick things off very briefly. We had to have this conversation a year ago as we tried to anticipate the impacts of COVID on the River Festival. And I have to commend Brad and his staff. While it feels like the River Festival is a long ways off and uh, there's plenty of reason for optimism about COVID and, and possibly uh, seeing a recovery or a progress, um, they have been very diligently and objectively uh, planning and, and they'll get into the details of it. But uh, you don't just pull this off overnight. This is a long-term project. It takes a lot of advanced planning. And so Brad's brought this conversation to us today to talk about the 2021 River Festival. Uh, thank you, Mike, and uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, and it, uh, for those that are on the phone line, this is Brad Anderson. I'm Director of Saline Arts and Humanities. And uh, I also have uh, on the call today a number of our staff. So when we get into question and answer times, uh, uh, if something uh, is uh, beyond uh, my direct knowledge or you ask for more specific information um, I hope to have the staff members uh, necessary here to be able to respond to that um, and uh, Lauren you can go to the first slide if you want to before we go any further I just want to check to make sure I see that Commissioner Ryan is here and I just wanted to make sure that he was able to connect and he can hear us and be heard I can hear you uh, if you can Thank hear you. me I thank can't, you. thank you. Uh, Brad, I'm gonna share the screen now. Will you do me a favor, if you have a particular staff member that needs to be brought into the conversation, if you can just indicate that to me just so I can unmute them, I would appreciate that. Uh, very good, thank you. Go into slideshow mode. Yeah. And uh, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. Our pretty one of the big crowd is there. Um, I'm here today uh, to provide an update regarding the department's plans to reschedule uh, the 2021 Smoky Hill River Festival. From June 10th through the 13th uh, to Labor Day weekend, September 2nd through the 5th uh, for this year only. The decision to make the move was done uh, with a combination of public health economic impact as well as uh, our ability to fulfill the purpose and mission of the event in mind mm -hmm. the presentation today will take about uh, 20 minutes or so if my timing is right i'll have plenty of time for you all to ask uh, questions and and to get some additional details towards the end um, so with that uh, i'll go ahead and and uh, go on uh, next slide please the Salina Arts and Humanities staff, with input from stakeholders, public health officials, and peers in the field, uh, spent eight weeks in the late fall and early winter trying to imagine and program for a June event with the current social distancing guidelines in place. That's really all that we had to work with at this time, and many of the indicators locally are that until the vaccine has been fully implemented across the community with some additional time for both shots and the few week delay after the second shot uh, for some uh, that uh, that was really the only realistic guideline we could follow. At the conclusion of this review, uh, the details of which will come shortly, we determined it would not be appropriate to hold the event in June. Um, so uh, I, I'm uh, showing our hand. I'm giving you the punchline uh, to the end of the joke or, or the, uh, uh, the uh, whodunit at the end of the novel, but that's really where we're headed. And so uh, the time I'll spend now, go ahead and go to the next slide, Lauren, is uh, to take a look at what we looked at. This is not the entirety of what we looked at, but uh, the next seven slides or so are gonna show a comparison of a few of the areas that uh, impacted the decision uh, to move the festival to the September date. In June, we would, and I'm not gonna read slides to you, just to give you a heads up. Uh, I think this has been out since Thursday, so um, I trust that uh, you would have or will have a, a chance to review some additional details that are provided in the slides. In June, uh, we would likely have to cancel the use of shovels and the big band dance. Um, the Artiopolis crafts area for kids would need to be a carry out only. 
uh, uh, just due to the close nature of hands-on activities of kids and volunteers working together, many of which uh, the volunteer and some of the parents are at a vulnerable age. Um, we just didn't feel like in a June event that that was likely to be able to happen. Um, by September, we believe it's much more likely that all of these can occur as normally as planned. Some possible public health adjustments would need to be made. We might have to continue to look at some sanitization, sanitizing of, of uh, certain areas of the children's area, but um, a much greater likelihood of uh, being able to have an adequate number of volunteers and uh, to be able to have uh, a, a larger number of people working in proximity, uh, even for short amounts of time uh, for some of those crafts. Next slide. In June, uh, there would need to be significant, and hang on a second, I wanna, let's see. Hold on, there. Yep. There you go, sorry, Brad. That's okay, I, I uh, forget to look up at the two screens here and, and make sure that we're on the same page. In June, there uh, would need to be significant alterations to the backstage areas. Uh, we'd have to limit access uh, to patrons in the art exhibitors as they move through the show. We, we explored ideas, for instance, of uh, putting a line down the middle of the art shows and having people only go one way through the show and maintain six foot distancing between them and only one family unit per, per uh, booth at a time and so on. Uh, as you might imagine, uh, that didn't really lend itself well to uh, to what uh, could create both positive and uh, profitable experiences for the artists. Um, additionally, some artists and performers indicated they would not participate if they hadn't been vaccinated. Uh, a number of them fall into the phase five group and, and uh, um, out of respect uh, to their needs and health considerations, uh, we thought that was an important uh, factor that we should have considered as well. The staff anticipates that by a September uh, date, uh, a large number of vaccines would be distributed. All those intending on having one should be able to, uh, uh, or are much more likely to have been able to have access to a vaccine, have its full impact, um, and still be under the protective uh, time that, that has uh, currently been estimated uh, for them to work. Um, this would uh, help mitigate risk and uh, some of the excessive precautions that we'd have to take if we did hold the event in June. Uh, next slide, Lauren. The disinfection of public facilities such as tables, hand yeah, extra hand washing stations and restrooms would require uh, significantly higher involvement by staff and volunteers, um, also increasing our costs. We didn't go to the trouble of trying to quantify exactly how many more restrooms per capita we might need or what kind of uh, uh, specific volunteers that we'd need to spray a restroom or, or how often we'd have to wipe a service or a table or whether those facilities would be provided for people to police their own tables either before sitting or after they were done. Uh, but as you can imagine, uh, that just that action in itself uh, with uh, uh, I think about uh, 60 or 70 porta potties and uh, I believe 15 to 20 hand washing stations throughout the park um, uh, 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 may not be adequate for the numbers that we would normally expect. Um, the food vendor areas and other spaces in the park uh, would be a little bit more difficult to manage as well. Uh, you'll see in a little bit here in terms of our anticipated attendance numbers. We tried to imagine the 36 food vendors with six foot spaces um, between each family unit or group, not between individuals, but as one to four people go to a booth to order or um, uh, how many people we might be able to accommodate in that space and is it even possible. Um, for those of you who've gone to a festival uh, uh, during those peak times of uh, people wanting to eat and get drinks, um, that, that main food row can be almost shoulder to shoulder, very difficult to pass with a stroller or wagon, uh, let alone if we had to increase those distances that significantly. Um, 
there uh, were some things that uh, I think uh, may come up here in just a minute too, but uh, that we that we looked at, um, like for instance, uh, whether it's in June or September, it's highly likely we'd be eliminating a food tent that's over by the fine arts area and behind food row and, and near the tennis courts um, because of the unmasked uh, uh, harder to control spaces. It's not worth the thousand dollars we pay for that tent for that week um, for the few people who would be able to be served. So our alternative, and we discussed this with park staff as well, but is to spread picnic tables throughout the park uh in shady spots and allow uh people to gather more safely separated uh for eating and drinking that they're not doing at their uh, chairs and blankets uh the next slide in the kids area face painting and lego lane are two popular areas that uh, uh the kids populate uh, but due to sanitation and exposure risk if we held this in june um, we would just eliminate those, uh, again, further reducing the kind of experience that kids and families have come to expect. Uh, there are some alternatives for face painting uh, a little bit later in the year, including some spray-on temporary tattoos and or some airbrushed uh, tattoos and, and some things that don't require as uh, long or as close of uh, work for a prolonged period. So um, we feel like uh, by that later time uh, and, and especially at an outdoor event after, um, uh, hopefully the virus is, uh, is minimized that we'd have a chance to keep those in place. The, um, you're okay, Lauren, uh, with the, you can go to the next one. This one is a little bit more layered. Uh, with assistance from the city's engineering department, the staff did their best to establish park capacity. How many people can we safely get within the park with social distancing in mind? Again, this was assuming we were gonna try to do this for June. We used a variety of grids superimposed over the park grounds. One was a six foot grid and, and just said, how many six foot spaces are there in the primary area of the festival. And then we um, uh, we did another one with a 16 foot grid and particularly looked at that in front of the Stein stage so that we got an idea of what a normal Friday or Saturday night or Thursday at Festival Jam, how many people did we have in that particular area? And what if we put people in groups and then had them with six foot distances between each group, how many people could we get? And uh, it was uh, amazingly low uh, with, with those kinds of spacings. Uh, we did not attempt to put individuals at six foot distances throughout the Stein stage because that isn't how people gather or the kind of experience that they'd want. So I think we averaged somewhere um, around six or seven people, I think, per 10 foot square with a six foot space around them. Um, the engineering department's mapping was really, really helpful because they did that over using our satellite imagery and, and, uh, um, and then we eliminated some of the areas that um, aren't used like the formal garden and, uh, um, and, and where the hard facilities are. Um, we even in this uh, preliminary uh, plan for a June event, we eliminated the Bravo stage in the north part of the park and then imagined moving a portion of the craft artists over to the Bravo area. And uh, the, uh, uh, in, in doing so, that created a little bit more room for shopping and, and some social distancing between the artists that the Four Rivers or that West Side Arts area is pretty tightly packed and, and a little more congested at the loops. And so this uh, was a way to work around that uh, potential um, uh, uh, conflict. <laughs> so with all that being said, um, the, the results uh, indicated that we could safely distance and manage approximately 10,000 people in the park, 10 to 11,000 uh, uh, people at the very most. We get 11,000 in a concentrated area on Thursday night. And uh, 
and on a busy Friday or Saturday, uh, late afternoon uh, and evening, and in some cases in the early mornings when the children's area is packed, uh, our uh, uh, previous numbers have indicated we'll have between 12 and 15,000 people in the park for extended durations uh, at a time. So again, kind of using June as the benchmark, this would potentially result in patrons being denied entrance to the park until a sufficient number of guests left. Um, our staff explored daily passes for sale at the gates, single day advance sales with limited numbers. Uh, we looked at uh, some other creative options for how we might do attendance, including a portion of a day, you know, attendance and have a morning ticket and an afternoon ticket and so on. No matter what we came up with, the, the, the administration management and structure of that is, um, uh, would be really prohibitive uh, to, to go forward. So the um, staff, uh, um, ultimately, uh, we, we didn't, come up with a satisfactory result for being able to have uh, the largest number of people in the park possible um, and and uh, delaying it for a later time when social distancing may not be as prevalent uh, seem to make sense. Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide. A uh, review of local, state, and national forecasts of vaccine distribution indicate that some phase five recipients may not have received their full vaccine by early June, making a significant uh, relaxing of distancing guidelines unlikely by this time. Um, I, I do wanna be clear, I didn't ask uh, uh, Hannah uh, at uh, emergency management or, uh, or, or uh, uh, Michelle, I'm sorry, or, uh, um, uh, our, our, uh, Jason, the, the health officer, I didn't ask them to go on record specifically. I just told them where we were headed and what we were looking at and asked if, uh, um, there was a higher likelihood of having something that appeared more normal by a late summer date. Um, and their early indications, again, this is in early to mid January that we had this conversation was that they were much more comfortable at an outdoor event happening 90 days after vaccine distribution through phase five would be completed than they would be um, as early as June. Um, they did indicate that masks are highly likely well into the fall and uh, through much of uh, possibly through much of 2021. Um, so while social distancing, especially at outdoor events, may not be uh, as gr great of a concern uh, for something like River Festival, uh, the mask wearing uh, could still be prevalent and something that we'd have to take into account and enforce. Um, but, uh, um, but we'd be able to do so with a little easier passing on the sidewalks and, and moving in and out of facilities and, and standing in line and so on, depending on um, what the, the health guidelines are for that time. So, uh, Lauren, next slide. As uh, reported earlier, and this is the financial impact, lower attendance at the park means lower revenue. The festival is made possible each year by private and public funding. Two thirds of the revenue that is earned for the festival, uh, or two thirds of the of the revenue for the festival is earned. Um, that's ticket sales, booth fees, food sale commissions, um, uh, uh, t-shirt sales, other things uh, uh, along those lines. But the, um, our primary one is is attendance, and um, you know, about forty two. We say between forty and forty three percent on a given year of our revenue is based on attendance. So if we reduced our daily attendance down by what could be a third, um, th that could create some potential problems for us in terms of, uh, um, in terms of the trying to balance our budget by the end of the year. Um, the other third of the revenue comes from private contributions. The Salina Arts and Humanities Foundation Board has been supportive of this recommendation to uh, um, to delay the event and uh, um, the uh, 
uh, our my primary job uh, uh, besides working with this well-qualified staff is to uh, uh, try to anticipate the earned revenue but uh, also try to mitigate uh, losses as much as we can and uh, I'd like for the city to be able to fare as, as well as possible the final conclusions next slide Lauren as you are all uh, well aware, the Smoky Hill River Festival is a beloved and cherished event in Salina. Uh, it's not only a festival of the arts, uh, but it's a celebration of the spirit of this community. Uh, the final decision by staff and management to move the date was done with this in mind. It's a tremendous amount of work, uh, but the staff agrees that the extra time, energy, and sacrifice is worth the effort uh, to make the festival the very best it can be um, with the challenges and circumstances that we've been going, uh, okay. uh, doing. Uh, next slide. And the uh, last two here, just so you can kind of see where we are in our schedule. Um, what's next? Uh, I'm, again, I'm not going to read this detailed list, but I kind of highlighted some things that we're going to be doing February through May. Uh, some of those have already commenced. Uh, and then the other uh, more technical details uh, in terms of our press briefing and when wristbands go on sale and so on in the June through August time. The staff has spent the last few weeks updating calendars, uh, contacting uh, contract service providers, having preliminary conversations with advisory bodies, the Salina Arts and Humanities Foundation Board, uh, key volunteer leaders uh, in an effort to identify as many obstacles as possible. Contract language uh, for our artist agreements and performer agreements is being updated with uh, Greg Bankston's help and Anna Pauscher Morowitz from our staff. And she's been having great success in renegotiating contracts with artists who we had booked for last fall or for last spring uh, in June uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, this new date. We uh, are looking at other technical details and, and having some extensive staff meetings once a week to go over some of these technical details and moving parts because as uh, um, you may or may not imagine, uh, <laughs> uh, we normally, in a, in a normal year, we would begin planning the 2022 festival this April. So we're, we're 14 months in planning for each festival. In this case, we're gonna be planning the 2022 festival at the same time that we're trying to detail and execute um, the 2021 at a later date. And uh, uh, we're still trying to figure out how to navigate some of those minefields, but believe that uh, uh, with some careful planning and, and following the calendars that we've set for the last 45 years, uh, that we can do that. Uh, a press release is going to be distributed following this meeting with you all today. Uh, social media and uh, website updates will also be posted shortly after 4 p.m. Uh, in order to keep the public informed uh, at about the same time that you all are being informed so that uh, um, uh, rumor mills and, and misinformation doesn't have a chance to get out. We want to be on the front end of this and, and speak from uh, both the confidence and assuredness that we're going to uh, go forward to the best of our ability. We recognize that things are very fluid right now. So we're doing our best to stay flexible as planning and execution goes forward. With that being said, and on to the last slide, the Salina Arts and Humanities staff is gonna be focused on these four key elements that are before you as we continue our work. You know, we're gonna maintain the positive spirit and celebratory mission of the festival. Uh, we're going to continue to be respectful of and promote public health and safety using available science and professional resources. Uh, we want to be a responsible partner to artists, performers, volunteers, city departments, and festival stakeholders. And uh, finally, uh, we'd like for the event to be as smooth as ever um, with its vendors, service providers, and citizens as we uh, produce this uh, 45th anniversary event. 
Um, one of the best compliments that our staff receives every year are the people who show up at the park and uh, or, or contact us in March or April and say, hey, if there's still time, I've got a great idea for your festival like we just started it. And you know, we have to say, well, gosh, we, we had the press conference a week ago and uh, it's ready to go. You know, and so uh, uh, we uh, we like it that people can come in and the rest of the worries of the world disappear. And, and uh, we hope that uh, this year by delaying until September, we have the opportunity for it to be as um, as uh, comfortable and as smooth as possible. So with that, um, Lauren, I think we can pull it off the screen share and um, I am available for questions. Um, first, I'd, I'd just like to thank you and your staff for the effort that, that you put in going through all the details and all the different ways that um, the, festival would, the festival would be impacted knowing what we know now and establishing occupancy for the park and what that looks like and i know that a lot of work went into reaching this decision and i would just like to 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 thank you for sharing that with us and for putting all that time uh, and analysis into it and that's all i have if anyone else has a question or a comment uh, uh, commissioner davis just one question i agree it, it's uh, you've done your homework looks great plus if it's labor day weekend everybody has monday to rest up before they go back to work tuesday uh what would be different is that school would be in session on that friday uh two-part question does that affect the programming that you would offer that would on friday in particular would be geared towards the younger folks uh and or, or have you talked with usd 305 to see if they can creatively structure a fun day at the festival and still get credit for having kids in school. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the, sh the short answer is, is you're the first for us to be out publicly and openly uh, to share our intent. USD 305 is going to have to be one of our uh, earliest and next conversations, um, in part because some of our uh, key committee leaders and our technical support staff are employees of 305. We believe that there are some ways we can work around that in the event that they don't have the available staff or time to be able to do a release. Um, in terms of the scheduling and programming, a large number of our Friday regular attendees, especially in the children's area, are the numerous daycare centers that are throughout the community. They come in their cute little matching shirts and all holding hands or tied at the waist or whatever they do to try to keep loss from being too severe. And they work their way through the various uh, uh, pieces and programs. And so um, we know that Friday morning would probably be a little quieter because like the uh, daycare program at the Y or the, the young uh, kids program at the Y would not be in session on that day. And so um, they do sometimes bring over a decent number of kids. But uh, um, in terms of the programming schedule, we're just at the early phases of saying, would it make sense to open a little later in the children's area on Friday and stay open a little later into the afternoon? Uh, would it be worth a conversation with the superintendent to see if they have some flexibility in their schedule and whether it's a teacher in-service day or something else that uh, might be able to be scheduled at that time instead of two weeks later? Um, so those are on our list uh, with 305. Um, and I believe that uh, you also mentioned the Labor Day holiday, and I do want to say we, we did look ahead at, um, because of that holiday, typically two of our city departments, Parks and Public Works, are in mass in the park, restoring it and getting tables and chairs put away and tearing out signs and snow fencing and other things. Our intent is to keep some security in the park to protect some of the assets that we have it may be open on Labor Day for the public to be able to enjoy, although uh, there will still be some festival remnants there. But uh, our intent is to not incur uh, overtime uh, uh, or or 
disrupt at least that one day off uh, or, or the three day weekend for our public works employees that uh, um, had had counted on that that holiday. So we would jump back into the park on Tuesday after the event rather than Monday to finish putting away our toys. Okay. So. Thank you. Yep, uh, and I think Commissioner Ryan had a... Well, I think you sort of touched on my question area. I was gonna ask you to comment on the, the large volunteer contribution that happens with the festival and how you see that shifting from uh, the spring to the to holiday weekend. Um, we still aren't sure. Uh, I have one of our staff members that um, we're kind of designating with a new charge or challenge uh, this spring uh, for the next year. Uh, well, it's actually longer than that, but uh, to help initiate a more formal uh, recruitment, retention and recognition program for volunteers, uh, both for uh, our department, our division and uh, the museum. Uh, uh, Susan Everwine and Rosa De La Cruz will be working on uh, our volunteer efforts and kind of streamlining some of that along with input from our staff to uh, go back to that part of um, uh, as an example uh, and i'm not going to throw one of our local uh, businesses or corporations under the the bus but if we tried to hold the event in june there's one organization in particular that collectively represents almost 200 volunteers in the course of the weekend for all of the events and they indicated it would be very difficult to participate at that early of a date due to the health and safety of their employees and the vulnerabilities of those they serve and and so um, uh, uh, that would be a significant loss for us in terms of trying to replace that many in one organization um, so we're hoping with a little bit extra time and some additional time to recruit and for our volunteers to be vaccinated that we'll be in a much better place to retain many who've donated time for years. Are we ahead of the curve uh, as far as uh, putting ourselves back on track with our festival and what are all the other people doing that have events both in that slot that we're planning to move to and that are generally earlier in the year and probably also thinking about moving to later. That, well, I, I'm going to try not to be gauged I'm, at all. Yeah, well, I'm <laughs> going to try not to brag too much, but I think that um, and, and probably the person who's had the most direct experience with this uh, on our staff is Anna Pauscher. Um Anna, as I mentioned, has been talking to uh, our uh, uh, some of our entertainers, our headliners and others. And uh, um, Anna, do you wanna share for a minute about some of the conversations that you've had? Sure, um, I'll second, you know, I, I see us as ahead of the curve as far as what I'm hearing from other events and organizations that normally schedule in that late spring, early summer timeframe that the festival normally occurs. Um, I do know too, a lot of our performers uh, go to, uh, they, there's a little bit of a circuit or similar events that they always go to. And I'm hearing some of those, if, those events haven't officially rescheduled, um, but they were waiting on us just a little bit to understand what our move was gonna be so that they wouldn't hit the same time frame as us. So I think we'll be hearing a lot more as we move on. Um, Labor Day weekend, I think, is going to be a popular weekend, but I think we'll be one of the first to announce. Also, in terms of the schedule, this puts us, um, uh, we tried not to conflict with local uh, uh, offerings or, or direct uh, competition with, with other statewide events. At the current time, the State Fair would open the Friday after our festival. Uh, and the Saturday before, we did look at just for a little while, but we did imagine something off the Labor Day weekend and we looked at the last weekend of August. But uh, on that Saturday night, uh, the Stiefel Theater has a what I believe to be a near, if it's not already sold out crowd of Martina McBride. And 
in order to be kind of a good steward of, of the revitalized downtown of a new hotel that hasn't been able to benefit from a festival yet um, and and our other local providers that it uh, might make more sense to do it at a time that we're not competing with another large musical draw uh, from from and that's one of the first concerts of that scale that has been rescheduled so um, we're we're snug right in between those so mike's craig here i did have some people ask about whether it would conflict with the uh, tri rivers fair and the 2021 dates are august 4th through the 8th so there's yes. not a conflict there We, um, you know, it, it's not all rosy. I mean, I, I will say from an operational standpoint, one of the bigger, it, I, I'd say it's a challenge, but but something that we felt capable of, of dealing with. Um, we currently are, uh, uh, we uh, will have a new visual arts coordinator, the person who manages the uh, uh, art shows and, and the art installations uh, joining us in March. Um, uh, and, uh, um, Susan Everwine on our staff has been helping uh, kind of maintain that uh, position and work administratively along with the other support staff but uh, uh, Susan is the program assistant to that position and she uh, got a survey out to the accepted artists for 2021 that we had carried over from 2020 and of those responses about two-thirds uh, 60 some percent I think had indicated they were willing to change dates to that Labor Day weekend without a conflict or, or a problem. And some were appreciative of uh, us being that far ahead of the curve, as Anna said, uh, uh, and, and uh, giving them fair notice and, and just doing our best to hold the event. Um, that means that we've got approximately one third of, uh, of the show that still needs to be filled and not wanting to go back to zero and start the jury process all over at considerable disruption of time, staffing and money. Um, it, we feel it, it will be better with our long history of working with artists from all over the country to curate those positions in. So the uh, uh, 30 or so, uh, maybe up to 40 positions that we have um, we'll be able to kind of hand select those in their respective media and fill in the vacancies as they're finally determined. Um, some of those folks who expressed hesitancy to participate may change their mind if their shows either get delayed or canceled uh, or they decide we're a better gig uh, for the weekend. So um, uh, we have a strong reputation for treating artists well, for servicing them. Uh, well when they're here with the uh, refreshments and and uh, uh, knowledgeable and and polite patrons so um, we we feel like it'll be uh, something we can get through anyone else questions or comments <laughs> well, Mayor, um, if I can ask a favor uh, from the commissioners, much like our arts commissioners and and uh, others who uh, have their uh, kind of a pulse on the community from respective areas, um, as as indicated, we're we're planning every day and we're adjusting. Um, I. I we will be emphasizing both the fun and, and the spirit of the festival, but at the same time, knowing that uh, it's only once every hundred years appear apparently that we have a global pandemic. And, and we're doing that with that in mind. Um, we don't know what the next 90 days is gonna hold or the next 120 days, but we are gonna use fiscal discipline wherever we can to minimize our risk and exposure um, uh, until we are much more confident about the rollout of the vaccine and, and the percent of the population that chooses to take that and, and whether or not there's variations of the, of the virus that um, haven't been anticipated. And, uh, uh, and so we're gonna constantly be watching that 
uh, one of our next steps is to invite uh, the public health officials uh, uh, and, and emergency management to an upcoming staff meeting to go through sharing with them what we've started on so far and to let them poke some holes in it and see. Um, we, we welcome you or other citizens that you're in contact with to do the same for us. If you have questions, concerns, or ideas, um, we are easy to reach and willing to listen and, and want to be here to serve. Thank you. Yeah. Is, uh, is there anything from anyone, anyone else, any members of the public that would like to um, speak to this that have questions? Um, if you could virtually raise your hand, I don't think that I see any members of the public beyond um, the Salina Journal reporter, Mr. Rankin, but if there is, please raise your virtual hand or turn on your camera and wave your physical hand and we'll open it up. I'm not, I'm not seeing anyone. So, Mayor Hodges, yes. uh, if, if I might, and I, I wasn't going to say very much, but it occurs to me that Mr. Anderson might like some confidence as, as to the uh, consensus of the commission, and I think we're doing a responsible thing. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, holding it in June is probably not a wise thing to do at all. And I think trying to do it at the end of the summer gives it some time, gives the vaccine some time to do its work, um, and maybe gets the uh, case count a little bit more under control than it has been. Um, you know, I'm, I, you know, Mr. Anderson, don't take this as my permission to spend money hand over fist, but, you know, I, I would not be that distressed to even, you know, to if we hadn't lose a little money this year as opposed to making a little, it was normally the case, I wouldn't be terribly distressed by that if we can have the event. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, I think we need to be responsible, but I also understand that these are unique circumstances and, uh, you know, the likelihood of coming out as far ahead as we normally have, not that it's a, a, a large piece, but we've normally covered expenses. Um, is, is is fairly unlikely uh, so it, it it may be that we have to accept a little bit of a loss this time around just to have the community event and it does mean a lot to a lot of people i'd second that emotion I, I i agree i think you definitely have a, a consensus among the commission that it's it's the responsible thing to do you've done a lot of analysis and hopefully when we can get together and celebrate at the river festival we can do that with the fewest restrictions possible and really be able to enjoy all that it has to offer and um, enjoy a return to relative normalcy so um, yeah, we're we're hoping that uh, there seems that that's the number one question that uh, we've been getting throughout the community is, are you going to have a festival? You know, what are the you know what's the likelihood? You've got to have you know, and so um, I I am anticipating that the public is going to be enthusiastic about an opportunity to celebrate uh, the sun rising in a new environment and uh, um, and that. Uh, We'll, we'll have the ability, you know, Commissioner Franz on the fiscal side, um, uh, knowing that we may have a slightly lower attendance just because of some people's anxiety and so on, um, we, we already have built in a, a, a slight cushion with the wristband increase in price that you all approved uh, two years ago. Um, and, and that, uh, hasn't we haven't been able to have an event yet at those new prices and so uh, even if our attendance was down slightly I think we've got a little bit of a cushion because uh, rest assured we didn't spend everything in our budget to spend everything that we were raising our prices by we were hoping for that cushion so um, we'll uh, we'll continue to, to watch that going forward so and, and if we're still wearing masks, we'll have the most fashionable mask <laughs> with, the, with the festival logo. I mean, just smear it all over it. I mean, 
Well, you know, I replaced the face painting booth with a mask decorating booth. Ah, our, our, I, I think our, our museum director has uh, a uh, Mona Lisa uh, smile mask that just <laughs> trips me up every time I see her. So I, I think there are, uh, uh, well, maybe hope there aren't a lot of Picasso masks uh, and, uh, and uh, Van Gogh. Uh, those <laughs> might be a little disturbing, but uh, uh, well, uh, uh, I might, um, and I know we're almost out of time, but uh, since I do have staff here, if any of the staff feel like there's something that I missed that would be important, uh, if you'll hold your hand up, I think Lauren would be able to see you. One second, Anna. Thank you. Brad um, alluded to this earlier, but I thought I'd mention, um, as far as our entertainment goes, it's been really encouraging that nearly all of them that we hired for 2020 that were not able to make it um, are moving with us from June 2021 to September 2021. And so it's encouraging to see that they're excited to get out there and perform again um, when it's safe. And we're, we're hoping that our event is one of the early ones. All right. Okay. Does that, does that about wrap things up? If that's, so. Uh, that's good for us. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Brad, and thanks to your staff for wearing all the different hats and juggling all the different schedules. And um, hopefully we'll all be able to, to celebrate on Labor Day. Uh, Mr. Scrag, do you have anything further to add? No, not really. I, you know, I mentioned it before, but the, the decision we had to make in 2020 came early. That was a really hard decision. And I have a lot of respect for Brad and his staff for working that one through, let alone what, what we're having to adapt to this yet this year. So I'm as optimistic as anyone. We might be able to get this behind us and have a celebratory event in September. I like the sound of that. Well, thank you all. Um, I guess we'll reconvene here at four o'clock. Thank you.